Hi, I'm Dr. Johnny. Have you ever wondered what to do about pesky under eye bags? Okay, so those bags that occur below the eyes, there's four different stages that I identify and we're going to go through each one today. We're going to first talk about why you get them and then what you can do about them both at home but also focused on in-clinic aesthetic procedures. So the first thing is why do they occur and some people don't exactly know why they just wake up one day and get them. There's many, many causes. Number one is, for most people aging, it's the loss of collagen. So when you lose support in the skin beneath the eye, the fat pad can then kind of herniate out, as we call it, or become more prominent. This coupled with bony changes, a little bit of sagging and loss of collagen in the skin, and then possibly a little hypertrophy of fat. And this is a new concept that we're looking into. All works together to form the under eye bag. Now, there's a subset of different causes. We're gonna focus say mainly on the treatments, but there's definitely things like allergies, lack of sleep, um, just swelling of the body, um, drinking or, or taking a lot of salt or alcohol the night before and people wake up in the morning and it kind of subsides over the day. So there's that aspect of what might create it, but we're talking today mainly about the aging process and the treatment of that under eye. So there's basically two fat pads on the upper and there's three fat pads on the lower area of the eye. So you can see it's a very complex process. The treatment will differ whether it's stage one, two, three, or four. Now stage one, we'll talk about that. This is a little unusual because really I'm going to say at stage one there really is no under eye bag. And why are we covering something like this? It's because a lot of times especially the newer generation, they want volume in the front of the cheek. They might come in and say, hey, I've got a hollow under eye, or they might even use the term an under eye bag, but really they just feel like they want volume here, and for the most part, that's a creation. We're creating an angle that doesn't necessarily naturally exist in people, but they like the look, especially if they have a, a more thinner stature. They carry a bit of weight a lot of people don't want that so we'll call that stage one where there actually isn't a, a loss of volume or an eye bag to create that look however it's a designer look stage two there's a minor fat pad it might be more like a nasojugal groove it could be a little uh, irregularity in color that's creating it and aesthetically what are we going to do to correct it? The number one thing is platelet-rich fibrin at this stage for me. What that does, it takes your own body, you spin the blood down, and then you get the growth factors to help naturally plump up a little bit of fat. It also helps with lymphatic drainage and it tightens the skin because remember, collagen was a culprit here. Now at this stage you have options at home and concomitant treatments are key. So there's many options at this stage devices, high frequency ultrasound, radio frequency, they can all be utilized. This stage two, really people have a lot of options and they want to manage it at home with home care, that's fine. The reality is a lot of people like a little plumping with platelet rich fiber and maybe a little bit of filler. But oftentimes at this stage we don't add a lot of filler because it can draw water in. So those are some options with stage two. When we get to stage three, it's very interesting because now there's more of a fat pad. There's not a lot you can do to change it at home to where you wake up and they're not there. They're almost there in the morning and in the evening. So really intervention, if people are concerned about it, is key. Now, surgical intervention comes into play. All the aforementioned treatments I talk about, but now we add filler that doesn't draw water in and possible surgical intervention. How do we determine surgery? It's a good consult with the patient, but there's one key thing that I ask patients and I look at, and that is if there's a sagging upper lid. At this stage, if there's a heavy upper lid and a significant eye bag, 
then it's often reasonable to consider surgery. They can take care of the fat pads in the skin above and below at the same time. And be mindful, even though all those things were done, after surgery, things like all the aforementioned treatment, like heating, radio frequency, platelet rich fiber, even a little bit of filler to fine tune after six months of the surgery, is very commonly done. And then prevention. So that's stage three. There's less at home options that take care of it, and it's more towards the PRF filler and maybe surgical intervention. Stage four, this is tricky because this is when most people come in to clinic and want to do something about it. This is the largest group of people. It's already a large fat pad, it's bothering them. Now people are telling them everywhere they go you look tired, you look old, what's wrong with your eyes? This is a very troublesome time. And really for most of these per people, the correct answer is surgery. There's two reasons that that doesn't happen. A, the patient doesn't want it. And B, it's not recommended. If people want to do fillers, if they want to do other treatments, they might sell them something. Oftentimes it's a perilous road because they need something more dramatic. Fillers draw water in, it's a heavy eye bag. There's more chance of failure of minimally invasive treatments. When people decide, I don't want surgery and they choose that route, be mindful. The people in the clinic, the people injecting and the people trying to, to treat that area are going to struggle in getting a great result. So you have to be mindful that you might be wasting your money. You might be going down a road where the look isn't what you want. In fact, they can look worse. So it's possible that they look better, but now you're at a 20 to 30% uh, rate of getting a good result versus 70% of actually decreasing the appearance of that under eye by not doing the correct treatment. After surgery, if there's that big of an eye bag, oftentimes filler around the temple, the high cheek, and the mid face often helps the surgery look better too. So eye bags, there's so much out there, oftentimes at stage, late two, three and four, topicals, creams, there's no magical source on the internet that's going to dissolve them or get rid of them. But those are some treatment options that we use in clinics. Let us know your experience. What have you done? What's your favorite treatment for under eye bags? What has your journey been? Join us over on Instagram. We discuss these things, show many before and afters over there and subscribe to this YouTube channel for continued helpful tips. Keep your skin and body beautiful, healthy, and vibrant. Thank you.